you. <laughs> Lord, please come with us before, as we come before you this evening, please be with us and be mindful of our, of our, of our business at hand and help us to, uh, to work towards a, a better environment, a better, a better world. Please with, be with those who cannot be with us this evening. And as we travel home, keep us all safe. We ask this in your name. Amen. Um, attendance. Um, I've got, I got the agenda. So I guess we got everybody present but Callie. As far as board members, did we talk about that? Yeah, we we talked about doing a, a roll call type of thing. So. But did I tell you guys about that? Don't recall. Um, so we're going to take attendance at every board meeting now, so that we can pay you one check at the end. Um, that way, there's an the official year, mm -hmm. so that you don't. There's an official have record. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. Yep. So do we need to go I, 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 or can we just say? My my only thing is, yes. roll in this case should be R-O-L-L, -L, not mm -hmm. R-O-L-L. Sorry. Don't be sorry <laughs> for being late. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Almost four minutes in before. <laughs> That's all right. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. So what if you're a half hour late? Do you get half pay that way? I didn't think that part through. <laughs> And that would be up to the board. All right, I am looking at last month's agenda. That's why I'm getting from next up here. Okay. When's payday? Uh, the last month of the fiscal year, September. Last month of September. Hey, it's my birthday month. Fantastic. It's birthday, yes. Right. Happy birthday. <laughs> Don't get interest on that. They're using mm -hmm. their money for six eight months. Mm -hmm. That was his <laughs> idea. He didn't want to throw a piece of paper. <laughs> I guess that'd be easier on the treasure. One check. Ching. All righty. Um, I am looking for a motion. I make approve. a motion to approve the minute. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Agenda edits. We have, I'm sorry? Forgive me. Um, you should probably already get, also have on the agenda for approval of, approval of the agenda. It is. It's uh oh well. I mean, agenda edits. Does that count? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Instead of an approval of the agenda, we have some edits to make to said agenda. I see. So we would have to make the edits first, correct? Um. Yes, you would. Okay. So forgive my impertinence. And then <laughs> after we make them edits by by amending our by by editing our agenda, does that yeah, you does that cover the does that kill the Get us, yeah, or do we need to go back and no, approve that? No, just say uh, you're approving the minutes as as amended. Yeah, that's correct. correct. And maybe for future agendas, you could just put agenda edits and approval. Just to I, yes, it. I made a note. Thank you. And everything, everybody's got them highlighted that we, that's yep. been added. Correct. Anything that's changed has been added. Is... I make a motion to approve the edits to the agenda and approve the agenda overall. Have amended? Yes. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Opposed. That brings us up to public comments. Is there any public comments? Anybody out there in that land? <laughs> Does that look like it? Oh. We're good. Sharcy, did you unmute? Did you want? No, she's just reconnecting. I think you're good. All right. Um, we all had a chance. Do we, who who are we having other than Jack as far as um the reports? Did we have a, a highlight yep. one this week? Our highlight is um Tracy, our soil conservation technician. Okay. She's Before Tracy gets on, is there any well. questions with any of the other reports as printed? Any other questions or anything? All right. So you're on, Tracy. I think right? we were going to go around and do a one minute update from the staff. Oh, from everybody? Something that they were excited about. And then I think Jack oh. wanted to speak as well on his report for the month. Correct. Where MDARD report is on the agenda. So that's 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's staff first, right? That, that yes. Gotcha. All right. Well, might as well start with you, Ben. You got your. All right. Uh, in the interest of uh, saving time and getting this done quickly, the big one is we uh, we did write and submit that grant for uh, the Lakes Conservation Grant, which would be um, natural shoreline design and implementation on lakes throughout Ottawa County, mostly Crockery and Spring Lake. Uh, we'll hear sometime this summer about that. And then a couple of really big reporting uh, periods as well for Crockery and Sand and then Central Ottawa County. Uh, and I think both those deposits just hit. So that was like 228,000 something for those two grants. So yeah, lots of cover crops, lots of good stuff last fall. Yeah. Thanks. Sarah? Um, my highlight is that um, we had our first conservation on tap uh, in January and it was on the non-point source uh, pollution. Me and Ben did our little presentation. We had about 30-ish or so people attend and everyone really enjoyed it. Um, the brewers and the um, Trail Point uh, owners were there and they really liked it and they were saying that they'd love to do more work with us and they even said, hey, maybe we could do a, a beer collaboration, which would be really fun. Um, and we also got a lot of really great um, connections and also we were able to get a sponsorship out of that. So it was Perfect. very positive, lots of good feedback from people and that is my January highlight. All right. Oh. Do you want to go? go ahead? She oh. gets the big spot. <laughs> That's true. Um, my January highlight is that people are inviting me to think now because they're aware that I'm here. So I gave five presentations um, at various conferences. Um, so lots of driving, and then I did a lot of plant sale preparation as well. So awesome. Thank you. My highlight from the last month is that I was able to submit three reimbursements on behalf of the Sigma, and I was really excited to learn how to do that and help Natalie out. Perfect. Alex, do you want to go? Sure. Um, a highlight for uh, this past month is I am 99% done with my reporting for the year, and uh, that was a big project. And then this week, I am giving a report on that data to the Ottawa County Groundwater Board to help uh, inform them on the groundwater issues and just continue to improve that relationship. Awesome. Yeah. Will, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, my main focus this month has just been doing a lot of planning for the 2024 treatment season. Um, Doing some quotes for landowners, for Hemlock Willie Indulgence, we can have them on the books to survey and treat them later in the season. Um, preparing the strike team workflow and the treatment timing across all the grants and all the job sites that we have, just so we have a game plan, hit the ground running. Um, also updating all my standard operating procedures um, in with the new coordinator starting, just so she has stuff to read and go over and just help that transition a little bit. Good. Charcy, would you like to give an update? Sure, yeah. The big thing over with NRCS right now, besides our applications that we're working through, is that we have a new staff member. Her name is Rebecca Aguilar. Um, she is a um, recent master's graduate from Grand Valley in natural resource management, and she was came on a couple weeks ago and has hit the ground running and is helping us with all of our workload. So we're excited to have her on board. Darcy, is she a soil con? Yes, she is. Excellent, thank you. Fred? Oh, okay. He is not. He's not one of um, your team? What? No. Jack, do you want to give your update? Sure, it might take more than a minute now. That's all right. <laughs> Okay, um, in the governor's proposed budget for fiscal year 25, the, uh, the MDARD component includes uh, the director's proposal to restructure how meat is delivered. Uh, the proposal is to bring the 42 positions that exist now in conservation districts and bring them into the department, grade 24, full-time employees that would deliver the program rather than conservation districts. Hmm. So M M guard will become full control. If yeah. This is a money saving 
Yeah. Now the the director feels that the program is not as effective as it can and should be, and he feels that the department would get more done than conservation districts can. Would they become regulatory? Like they would have that legal obligation to report a procedure? Yeah. If they're mm -hmm. legally obliged, if they see something like a discharge on a farm, they'd be looking like it's legally obliged to report. Mm -hmm. Whereas conservation district technicians are not. There's the problem. And they think they're going to get a invite to anywhere? I mean, <laughs> they, <laughs> no one has. Well, before it even gets to that point. Yeah. Really? I mean, I say that very facetiously, but they think they're going to be invited out, and so this is just a way to gut the program. Keep in mind that the department is a regulatory agency. <laughs> the the, the uh, director says that we have a great relationship with our clients, but what do you? I can editorialize. Our I clients, can. <laughs> our clients are predominantly a regulated community, and we do have a good relationship with the regulated community. Um, the challenge with most farms, I'm trying to not editorialize. When we're on a farm, it's usually because of a problem, yeah. whether it's a use investigation, pesticide use investigation, or something's uh, screwy with bulk fertilizer shipping on. Um, so I'm not sure that. I can't say what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a proposed plan, or this is already mine made up, and this is how it's going to move forward. Well, this is proposed. Okay. And as I think we're going to hear, there's many opportunities to get that fixed. I don't understand what you mean when you say get it fixed. Push back. Okay. There's yeah. time for it. I can say more than Jack can say. <laughs> if no. you want me to wait till my two minutes at the end, I can. If you want me to, well, you know, just pitch in here. Again. I mean, am I surprised? No, but I mean, am I surprised? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. they can take a great. I would volunteer program. More than surprised. Well, I mean, they can take a great voluntary program that's actually doing something and mm -hmm. mess that up too. So, do you see all the meat workers bailing out because they don't make any money now? Well, the expectation is that we the technician who will populate these positions. But they're going to cut half of them out. Well, That's 42 correct. to 24 is basically half. So I'd be looking. <laughs> yep. Hmm. And none of them are guaranteed to continue working. They don't have to reapply correct. for the job. Correct. Oh, and I forgot the fun part. Oh, oh, oh boy. We got more better news. Save the good part to last. A large proportion of these positions will be in the Western Lake Erie Basin in the Saginaw Bay. No, oh, because they are going to prioritize uh certain waters, which we all know what that is. So what's the good news? <laughs> I wish I had some. That's my section. <laughs> Something happened to the recording. Can I get it flashed up? Yeah. <laughs> no, Dad. Sorry. Uh, We're going to comply. If my boss is there... this, I'm in trouble. That's okay. Is there any appropriate avenue for the conservation district to um, put in their opinion or, you know, on this? May I respond? Yeah. To that? Real yeah. quick, address that. Go for it. Um, Yes, absolutely. There is. And um, MACD is working very hard to coordinate that. Um, you guys will all be getting an email from me later tonight with our strategic plan as far as how we are um, combating this. The good news is that a lot of our key partners, um, Farm Bureau being one example, uh, share our concerns and are equally displeased. So I've been coordinating all week very closely with Farm Bureau and with our other partners 
to create a coordinated response. I will be going to Lansing on February 28th, along with um, other key members of our legislative committee for the budget appropriation, or the Senate budget appropriation subcommittee meeting on this particular topic. So we will have an opportunity to make comment. Um, and we are also coordinating additional legislative outreach and media opportunities. So basically working on um, pre presenting a very strong united front to help legislate, because it's ultimately gonna be in the hands of legislators to approve or not approve this, to make amendments to this or to not. And obviously the MEAT program is one area of concern. The cutting of a million dollars of CD funding is another concern. Um, the things that are very, very helpful right now um, to MACD is, uh, and I will be reaching out to basically every conservation district directly, um, is demonstrated outcomes. So being able to show absolutely your dollars are being well spent and you would not get the same outcomes for the same dollar spent anywhere else, um, as well as um, to advocate for all of the exact things, you know, farmers are not gonna let state technicians with a regulatory aim on their land. So that was brought up in a meeting with Director Boring yesterday. Um, and he basically said, you're wrong, farmers love us. So Tim and Matt <laughs> um, and all farmers um, were specifically looking for stories, photos, if you are willing to come to Lansing with me, come to Lansing with me for farmers to say, actually, that is not the case because, Director Boring can say that all day long, but if there's 20, 30 farmers in the room that are like, actually, no, legislators are going to pay attention to that. Um, so when I say MECD has been working tireless, tirelessly, I've not gotten much sleep. <laughs> um, and this is like our entire focus right now is combating this, but we will need all the support from every district that we can possibly get and every individual because... It, this requires a really strong response or else I'm concerned about what is going to be next. Like this is this is showing a fundamental devaluation of conservation districts that I think is really dangerous and we need to address. So. Okay. All righty. You good for now? No, not really. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you have any more that you wanted to share with us? Okay. Not the Thank you. It's not over till it's over, yeah, is what I would have to say about that. Um, I know there's a lot of people feeling very defeated in general, but it's not, it's over. not over till it's over. It's not over because Ripka says it isn't over. That's right. <laughs> okay. All righty. Well, then I guess, Matt, no. yeah, well, anything you got to bring us is going to be like Christmas. So <laughs> fire away. Um, I'm Tracy. As you know, I work under the NACD grant, which partners the Conservation District with NRCS. So um, I work as the soil con technician. I work most closely with Sharsley and now Becca, who's the new employee. And um, my program update is that we are in, we've already gotten the EQIP applications. That deadline was in November, but we are now in the intensive planning part of the year and NRCS started a new program well it's part of EQIP it's a new sign up called Act Now and they're trying to expedite funds get funds into the hands of farmers quicker so they wanted to spend more money up front rather than waiting so long because a lot of the money comes at the end of the fiscal year and gets into hands of producers late so they wanted to refocus that and expedite things. So we have, so our deadline for that, it's um, next Friday and we have six different applications that are going, being expedited in that way. And we've had, we have 13 EQIP applications overall. So out of those, we have two CNMP plans, two forest management plans, um, like three different cover crops, but that's like hundreds of acres, the three different applications for cover crops, four agrochemical facilities, four grade, grade stabilization structures, gutters, and two high tunnels. So and they're also trying to, um, a lot of high tunnels have only been funded in the southeast part of, and eastern part of Michigan. So 
they're trying to actually get money into people's hands for high tunnels. So, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Any questions? It's a lot of contracts. It is. It is a lot of contracts. Mm -hmm. And I'm feeling the, <laughs> the deadline pressure. So, but it's what kind of dollar figures on them? Roughly, I mean, I don't mean to put you on spot. But oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that is a good that's question. A, um, like say, it sounds, and, sounds like you're, uh, you're just, uh, push it push it push it it. probably, <laughs> probably going after when you think of all the chemical buildings and the underground outlets and grade stabilization and the engineering projects, maybe a million dollars we're trying to go after. Um, right now, we have on the books that we're currently managing from previous contracts two and a half million. So um, yeah, it will. It's we got a we have a big sign up. So we're plugging away, getting it all done by the deadlines, trying not to lose our minds. <laughs> and super Thank thankful you. to all the help that I have in the office because everyone is doing great. And we're really thankful to have Charcy back because <laughs> she was very missed, and it's great to have her in the office again. So that's it. Thank you. you. Alrighty. There's no border. We, I think we technically the ED report was first. Mm, no, no, no all the partners were oh. first. Now it's the uh, executive director report. I know, but that was the staff highlight, which was the second item. Mm. So just oh yeah, yeah. All right, all right okay. you get to go. Um, we give you extra time to get boned up on everything. Yeah. Um. Honestly, my update for the month. Um, it's gonna sound sappy, but I am just like so incredibly proud of our staff. Um, if you look at the events that we have in the next couple months, um, we have conservation on tap, which we are spearheading. We have farming forward, which we are a huge part of. We have a tree sale that we are putting on. We have a plant sale, um, that we are putting on. Um. What is that? Emergency planning for the farm. Another one. They pop up by the day, I tell you. Um, on top of that, I made a list the other night of things that the staff has uh, done without me asking that is not necessarily part of their day-to-day -day job. Um, one of them went ahead and started putting together all of the outreach material and order forms, uh, as well as looking at what we needed to order for the plant sale. One of them went ahead and took it upon themselves to find sponsors for our annual meeting, um, multiple. Uh, one of them noticed that we had a lot of county commissioner meetings coming up. They decided that they wanted everyone in the same room so that we could make sure we were all on the same page. All of this um, definitely falls under my job description, and I just want to say how incredibly thankful I am during this transition for these people, because they are above and beyond right now. That's my update. <laughs> Perfect. Your grades are amazing. Experience pays. You're killing us. Dedication. Mm -hmm. All righty. You're back up. You back up? Yeah, so this was one of our agenda changes. We were going to vote on a coordinator um, work agreement and stipend agreement tonight, but um, the candidate has backed out of the offered and accepted position. So last week we scrambled with the hiring committee um, and we reached out to another candidate that we felt was um, suited for the position um, and we are waiting to hear back. Um, they've asked for a week as they now have obviously other other things going on. So is this one local? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Watershed <laughs> conservation specialist update work agreement. Yes. So the next three um, are all updated work agreements. The first two um I don't have them in front of me. The first two are for our um, watershed specialist uh, and our watershed program coordinator. Yep. And um, they, you'll notice the changes that they've received a $2 raise. This is to make up for um, 
a bonus that used to come with uh, their grants that we have kind of done away with, which has led them to have a pay cut. Uh, and the district didn't feel that was appropriate. So um, it is being made up for in their hourly wage. And this was kind of something the finance committee worked up with them when they did the interim so they could keep their money going forward. And it's all mm -hmm. what was promised a long time ago. Yeah, so you'll, you'll notice that it's set to start, I think, in the beginning of April and our stipends end at the end of March. Yeah, so. I want to make a joke right now so bad that I don't feel like our, our nurse can take it. So I won't. <laughs> what kind of joke would this be? It honestly would. I would entertain a motion. I would actually suggest a motion that we lump all three of them together. Two. Can I speak on the third then if you want to do that? Yeah, well, I mean, we don't have to. I just, oh, sorry. I mean, we don't have to lump them all together. I just been. Mean, you could lump the first two and the third yeah. one. Yeah. That's, yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I will I'll make remote. a motion to approve Ben and Sarah's new work agreements as yeah. written. I second the motion. All that has been moved and second. All those, um, Doug, how do you vote? Yes. Tim? I didn't read it, but sure. <laughs> Do you need a minute? Okay. Yes. And it passes. Did you want to speak to the third one? Yes. Um, the third one is for our soil conservation technician. Um, we received uh, the NACD grant that will fund her for another year, which will be talked about when we go through the uh, appropriations budget update, but um, within that grant uh, was written a dollar raise for her, which you'll see um, displayed in the work agreement in front of you. Though. I'll make a motion to approve Tracy's to work agreement. Is there support? Second. It has been moved and supported. Rick, how do you vote? Yes. Tim? Yes. Doug? Yes. Passes. Um, the last one is also a change to the agenda because it just happened today. Um, we found someone that was interested in the bookkeeper position. Um, she has worked for us before. Her name is Annalise. Uh, she started out, she was a... Um, a strike team member for us. And we liked her so much that we hired her as an HWA technician. Um, and uh, then Megan kept her on to do some administrative work for her. Um, she's bright, she's um, very competent. Uh, she's been taking, since she's left us some, some classes for uh, business management and accounting. So we are very excited to get to work with her again. Um, so you'll see that work agreement in front of you. It's for a part-time uh, 25 hour a week position at $22 an hour. Um, in our policy, part-time district employees get uh, six paid holidays. So you'll see that displayed there as well. Uh, and we added um, two hours of PTO um, per pay period for her uh, as, as compensation. You'll also see her um, committee stipend agreement as well. It should be tucked in behind it um, because she will be sitting on the uh, the fundraising committee for us. Are there any questions? What? <clears throat> How many holidays do the full timers get? Twelve. We ended up. Um, we had a range of what we offered for the job. Mm -hmm. She took the lower end of it. Okay. Or, you know, everybody agreed at the lower end of it. Um, so we seem fit that, I mean, we're still well under budget okay. with offering the, with the stipend and the. And they don't cost us any money. They're in the budget. They take time off or anything that was already budgeted. So. Like I say, the, we're like... still well under when did we say we were still we were still close to two thousand dollars? It's about thirteen hundred um, under what we had in the appropriations budget for this position. Okay. I make a motion to approve this work agreement. 
Is there support? Second. Tim, how do you vote? Sure. Rivka. Yes. Doug. Yes. Welcome aboard. At least we got an analyst. Same thing about Megan. I. We did just leave it. We didn't really decide it. Her uh, contract doesn't have an end date. I looked at it today. Oh, so she's going to take her place, though, correct? Yes. Yep. And we're hoping that Megan will help train her for a How many years has she been gone? Because I don't remember. Um, she left here. Annalise. She left in in October. Last October, because she had. Yeah. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't recognize him, but I know the name. Yeah. I yep. Didn't recognize him. She was primarily field staff, so she wasn't. You probably wouldn't have seen her. Terror. Terror. Um, Megan is on until the end of the month. Okay. You know, but. Again, we kind of, again, she don't have really an end date, so to speak. Um, Transition. So we were hoping that, you know, we get two or three weeks with her. If it takes an extra week or two, again, there's a little money in the budget to be able to do that if need be. Oh, bring us up to finances. Can we pay the bills? Yes. Um, so I just want to note one thing before you guys go on. And also, of course, if you have any questions about it, please let me know. But um, two things, I guess. So first of all, you have the bill list that we're going to pay um, if you so choose. This one? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we modified it. So please let me know if you find this um, more digestible. I hope that you do. Mm -hmm. um, I want to note that you'll find an invoice behind it. I got this today and it's due before our next board meeting. So I just wanted you to be aware of it. Um, that One it's for a Fisher entry. Yes, it's something that we're going to have to pay, um, but I did not have a picture. I couldn't have it cut in time. Um, and then you'll see a third list. This is a list of bills that um, are similar to what happened today. I get the bill like today or tomorrow. Sure what to do to um, this is what but doing. the check is due before the next board meeting. Got it. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just I just wanted you to we have that. We approve it. I need you to have that running list of things that we are are gonna pay. Um, or need to pay, and I just very much want you to be aware of it. Yeah. Matt and I, as part of the finance committee, talk, we, Natalie's talked about this quite a bit, and she's just going to pay the bill and fire off a copy of what you did, just so somebody knows about it, mm -hmm. cover things, and you've done where we make it in the past, but it's just, now we're trying to lay out the bills and find a couple problems, and this will take care of it. Okay. Do you have any questions about that? Or would you like it in a different way? Just help refresh my memory, Doug. How many trucks did we buy and how many we're, we leasing? We're, we're leasing none. But what is this freedom leasing? That's the loan. Got it. Okay. Purchased them all. So just for information, we own three trucks, three yeah. newer trucks and Two and Ranger, right? Two older ones, or is it one? What do you got? Just a Ranger. We have, so we have four vehicles. Yes. Okay. And a want for the another one, but they put it on. It's in the budget, though, right? So what did yeah, the focus? Okay. What was the focus off. position? What did that do? Um, it was supposed to be for like the office staff during really busy field seasons like the summer, but it was not super reliable. It was prioritized originally for um, MEEP, MDAR grants, is what bought that one. Okay. Good thing we sold it. What, the next guy we got? No. All righty. Is there any more questions on the bank statements? Is there a motion to pay the bills? I uh, so move. Is there Second. support? Tim? Second. Doug, how do you vote? 
Yes. Tim. Yes. Mirka. Sure. Did I get ahead of myself as far as um, close the door funds and the cash flow? Nope. Did we all we need to cover that yet? Or? Yep. Okay. Um, so you will next see the close the door funds. about getting ahead of myself. No, I am sorry. You don't. <laughs> Sarah. Um, you'll next see the close <laughs> the door funds and the cash flow forecast. Um, the close the door funds, you'll... Um, it's basically everything that could possibly be reimbursed up that's until now. One. Yep, that one. Nope, that's the cash flow nope. forecast. No, nope. other ones put still. This oh, bottom sorry, left I'm corner just, is closed. Yep. Let's see what you're holding up. Um, and then it subtracts out um a lot of our assets, assets. Um, and then Megan comes up with that total uh at the bottom. It's not the highlighted one. It's the one down here. Bottom mm -hmm. left, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. Okay. And then our cash flow um, is actually like the most useful tool for me personally. Um, this keeps track of all of the reimbursements that we have out there to date. And it tells us exactly when we are going to be receiving them. The date is at the top. Um, you can see that it's the first day of the week is the date. Um, and then each column is, is refers to the week and how much we expect to receive from what funding stream within that week. Um, the bottom will tell us uh, how much we have, um, subtracting out any expected bills that we have coming up that week. So I'm thinking like payroll or, you know, the bills that you're about to approve now. Um, and so it helps us keep track of our our cash flow, as you know, reimbursement-based programs can be a challenge. And I mean, this is something that is really, really useful. Okay. Any questions on that? No, yes. these are all good. Oh. Sorry. How are we coming on our little savings fund? Where's that column live? That still happens? Such a good question. You were sure you get asking. someone to take your money to. We are literally wrestling with the bank over trying to get them Get a get a savings account started. Have you ever heard such a silly problem to have? My bank account? Is that what you said? <laughs> no, we're not. We got to deal with Chase Florida. I think it is. Yeah. It? yeah. There's a there's a representative for, I guess, government entities that we have to go through. She has been not the most no, <laughs> competent. Yeah. Very helpful. You said it. Not competent. Me. No. Um and. I am going to um, hopefully be getting some paperwork in the mail in the next week that we can sign and return. So what are we doing with it? We just put it in the drawer or you don't have any? It's in the back pocket. Sure. It's in your back pocket? That's what I'm nervous about. But you got to nope. pay for him today. That is on the record not true. We are <laughs> putting dollars in to begin with, and then we will go from there with small amounts. Um, we'll probably talk about it. Every yes. yes, that's the first step that I'm still working on. You would not believe what it, it took to get her name on the check. It's it's sad. I mean, it literally, it is. Well, and I guess that brings up the question. Like, I, I know it's always a massive pain to switch financial institutions, but at what point in time do we say we we'll can take our business? We're talking about the end, though. We talked about that. We, okay. we have kind of have started them conversations with, I mean, literally, I mean, again, trying to open a savings account. Yeah. It's normally a five-year-old kid can go down and get right. one open, but we can't. Right. So, yeah, yeah, very frustrating. But we're, we are working on it, Tim. It is something that Natalie brings up literally weekly. That's on her to-do list. So we're I'm really trying. <laughs> it's nothing to do with her. Okay. Good. No, keep asking. That, that like I said, that's yeah, it's well it's, it's been a while. I don't hear much about it. So no, that's a good question. Any other questions on that stuff? It brings us to the appropriations budget. Yes, so because we received uh, that NACD grant and the paperwork has been signed, uh, we have added that into the appropriations budget. I feel like it's highlighted what we changed. It's just in the dark. dark. Yeah. <laughs> you can see what's changed there. 
Um, I do want, want you to. I don't think I have the right page. It's just the yeah, um right the shaded air the no, shaded I areas the on the next page. This one here, I think, Tim. Second yes, page. So Somebody sorry. said this was all in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been through all that. Let's pay the bills. This is right here. Test. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one. No, right there. Yeah, the second yeah. page. Is bad. Bad. Is. Okay. <laughs> um, I do want you to note that the amount that's in there is for um three quarters because this is a calendar year grant and we run on a fiscal year so this budget's for a fiscal year but we'll have one more quarter of funding that will be added to the next appropriations okay. so we need to vote on that because it changed our bottom line at the other end right. i make a motion to approve the updated updated appropriations budget is there a support? I'll support. How do you vote, Rick? Yes. Tim? Yes. Doug? Yes. I'm I'm seeing yeses tonight. Okay, okay. Positive group, other than Jack. I mean, we're all, we all come to. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Jack. He's just, <laughs> He's just a messenger. <laughs> We appreciate you, Jack. We do. RCPP. RCPP. Yeah, I got myth. I thought I slipped in an extra one. Um, so my understanding is that in order for me to be able to sign the paperwork as the supervisor executive director, we need it in the minutes that um, it has been approved that I can be the authorized official. I make a motion to authorize Natalie to sign the RCPD. Is there support? Good. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? It passes. Now we get to the fun stuff. Conservation on tap. Yeah, so uh, there again, there's some flyers in the back. Um, as I said in my updated, in my little board report update, um, we had a good first round. Um, again, this is also a fundraiser for us. So the way that Trail Point is doing the fundraiser this year is they're doing it by um, like a dollar per pint sold during the time that the event's happening. So like 5.30 and 7. So the first... Um, the first event, uh, we made about $53, and then the next one, uh, we'll see how much it is, and then they'll cut us a check at the very end of it. So it's not like a huge amount, but it's definitely um, really nice that they are willing to do that. And so the next one is next Thursday, February 22nd, and Ben Savoy will be speaking, and it's going to be uh, focused on um, climate change in Michigan's forests, so talking about how Michigan's forests in, what, in West Michigan have potentially changed over the last few years and how they may change with things like pests and um, just uh, like oak, oak wilt diseases, things like that. Um, so we're about half to a little bit more filled up. So if you are planning to go, please let me know. I think you're signed up. Okay, I think um, I signed up, right? <laughs> yeah, but they're really fun and um, the, the public has really enjoyed it. And uh, we're seeing some new faces come to this one too, being in a new area. So that's the update. So spread the word. And then there's some flyers back there. So we get more people to come to our second and last conservation on tap. You said it's a fundraiser. So, I mean, we don't pay for the room, correct? Nope. They give us the space for free. Free space. And plus give us a little. Plus they gave us a little bit of money. Win-win. Mm -hmm. Did we advertise at the college? We have been um, sharing with them. Uh, I was trying to look at, I was sharing it with like partners and stuff. And also Keely's been sharing it with her friends. <laughs> And uh, I was trying to share it and see if we could put posters up, but apparently the college has rules against sharing posters that have anything related to alcohol on mm -hmm. them. So, yeah. so, so you know, but so we've had had some, attorneys. yeah, we've had some, we've had some GBSU <laughs> students come to the first one, and I think there's some signed up for the second one. So that's it. Fifty cents off a glass, we'll all be there. <laughs> all right, one dollar for the years. Farming forward. Uh, that is an event that we are partnering on with um, Ottawa County with the uh, Department of Strategic Impact um, and also with Park Township and with the ODC Network. That 
um, event is going to be happening on February 27th, and it's a morning event, free event, and it's going to be at the Yacht Basin in Holland, and it's going to be highlighting, so Park Township is the one who reached out to initially Ottawa County and to Becky Hatinga, she's the one working on it from there, and um, they wanted to highlight um, farmland preservation and easement options because it's a, they just recently approved farmland preservation in, Ottawa, in Park Township, so part of the event, the agenda is basically talking about um, easements, both farmland preservation and wetland easements, because it's in that kind of blueberry area where there's more wetland areas. Um, and then we're going to be highlighting some water resources um, resources from the district, from us through RCPP and our watershed programs, and then also ODC's programs. And then we're going to be talking about uh, farmland succession resources. Um, so that is what that event's about. And there's a registration link, but it's free. So share with your friends and let them know they can come. And there's going to be free uh, donuts and pigs in a blanket and coffee from DeBoer's and uh, Bowerman's. Nice. So come for the pigs. There you go. <laughs> Everybody likes the pigs. Yeah. Election. Ooh, how are we coming with that? <laughs> um. Yeah. So I'm pretty proud of our absentee ballot process, to be honest with you. We've gotten 102 Ooh. requests. And we've gotten over 50, I think was what I counted. Um, yes. Returned. Returned, yes. And it's gone like relatively smoothly, which has been pretty cool. Um, I do want to just note that I did receive um, notice through email from um, Callie that she uh, withdrew her um, candidacy uh, from, from the election. I have been advised that we move forward um, as the ballot has been published. And what that means, basically, yes, the ballot has been published. So we, her name is out there yet. Um, and yeah, so I mean, it's it's. And then we have one other person with Becky Huttinga in, you know, as as the, you know, still is out there um, running. So um, yeah, we're kind of. Like I say, everything's been published, and so we're we're just rolling with it. So, but that's um, like I say, we got word of that, and that's that's that. So, I, I got a question: what what happens if she's elected and decides not to? Does it go to the next person, or do you start over? It's Jack, <laughs> his phone's been ringing off the hook the last week with stuff. So, if um, if Kelly elects to remain uh, as a withdrawn candidate, then Becky would, by default, win. Because her name is on the ballot, even though she technically withdrew, she can still get more votes and decide to be aware. She could, yes, accept it then. To answer your question, Tim, it's it's a weird... That's weird. ...happening, weird. but... Um, oh. So the vote is still important? You know, I guess yeah. it's, you know, this vote still counts, theoretically. So, plan accordingly. Okay. Annual meeting. See, this is all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. All the fun stuff. Um, so, I just want to give you an overview of what we have planned um, for the annual meeting. Um, I think I said last time. We're going to do um, half of the room is going to be focused on day of elections and the other half will be kind of like an open house style um, with some food uh, laid out as well as educational materials um, with all of our staff representing in there to answer any questions that people have. I do have a ask from you guys, though, um, we every year will give out some awards. Um, so we give out a partner of the year award and a producer of the year award. And um, I've asked the staff for nominations. I would like to ask you guys for nominations. And then um, I will send out a, a form where we can all kind of just vote and um, we'll move forward. Also, if you have any ideas for cool prizes that you think uh, would be well received, I would love to hear them. Um, but maybe just try to get me that by the end of the week if you have ideas for nomination. The second point, does anyone have questions about that? The producer of the year, is that going to be somebody that's been working with? Those Preferably, years? yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the second point under annual meeting is um, I we wanted to talk about our annual meeting budget. 
So in our appropriations budget, we have $1,000 for our uh, annual meeting and $500 for our election budget that we can spend. We've already obviously had to purchase postage um, and materials to do our absentee uh, ballot um, stuff. Uh, but our annual meeting, um, we've not purchased anything for yet. So you'll see uh, under both of those line items, a list of things uh, that we have priced out. Um, I think we'll come in quite under the, the 1,000 for the annual meeting. The election budget, um, we had a couple of things that we would have loved to purchase, but um, because we're already at 380 something, uh, Yep. We suspect we're going to spend the rest of that probably on postage and materials for absentee ballots or day of ballots. Um, so we probably won't purchase those last two items that you see down there. I do just want to note, um, because of our excellent staff, uh, um, we have some really promising sponsors. Um, and I don't want to say that we have money when we don't, but it looks very promising that we will get um, the majority of this cost covered. Mm -hmm. And just to note, like already, it's there are certain, some things that are not on here, like Eldia Coffee is sponsoring again and is providing a coffee bar. So that doesn't, isn't even an expense on here, so. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I expect like the expenses that are on here, they probably will be covered by some, if not all of these sponsors. I'm jumping in a little late with not being on the committee or, or up to date with the committee. That's okay. What would happen if we did a couple really nice, when I say really nice door prizes, something we talked earlier about the, the seed thing. Yeah. Um, that could be your centerpiece of things. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, just, but I'm spend some money on a door prize. I mean, have a, a $50, maybe a bat house or, a, you know, something mm -hmm. conserve conservation wise a tool you know whether it be for i don't know what that would be i mean you know uh, but just something very or maybe a, you know i mentioned in the gift past, i could yeah. i could build like some bat houses or bird houses or something you know i mean then the you know it would be a nice a nice gift that someone goes home with and maybe they you know talk to their neighbor and you mm -hmm. know they like that's really cool you know mm -hmm. to get involved in at the tree sale I think we've house, house. Yeah. we have we do done that. We did that last year at the annual meeting. Right. We can absolutely put something like that together, and especially if we get sponsors. I was gonna say, we would looks have like we're doing to do that better than good. You know, yeah, we so. can absolutely put something like that together. Those are not our sweatshirts, though, right? Those are our yeah. T-shirts. Those are cultivating resilience yeah, fairs. Yeah, that we'll use so. our next. Yeah, probably could give some of them away. We could potentially, but I mean then. I'm our logo on it, though. No, great. No, I'd right. say I think. I commend, make a motion commend the to team. approve budget for the annual meeting. Already, I, really I, I think it's so. Oh, I know that's why. why that's why I said. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> so your motion was to to approve the annual meeting budget. All righty. Is there support? Sure. All those in favor, say aye. Right. Opposed? Tree sale. Excuse me, Matt, can I jump in? Yes. I plan on being at your um, annual meeting and election. Uh, part of, I normally don't have to do this, but I'm going to be nipping any tomfoolery in the bud if it were to arise. Perfect. We don't want Tom there. <laughs> You're just the man for the job. <laughs> Perfect. No, welcome. Pre sale. Um, <laughs> That's we, good, Ben. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> it's live. Um, again, there's a flyer in the back. Um, there is a catalog online with all of the trees we have available, and also there's order forms in the back that lists on the back what the what the um, what we're selling as well. Um, the started February fifth, and tree sale. Orders are going until April 8th, and then pickup is at Reinders Blueberry Farms on April 19th. Um, gotten quite a lot of orders in already, so uh, they're rolling in. Um, I don't know, I, don't, I could pull it up how much exactly, but they're 
They're coming in, so that's good. Mm -hmm. If this is on a Friday, when do you wrap? We are going to be wrapping on, I think we're having our volunteer wrapping day on the 17th. And then um, after that is going to be staff sorting on the 18th, I believe, to get everything sorted into their order specifically. So, And there's a link online if you have family members or friends that want to volunteer to help with our tree or plant sale mm -hmm. or annual meeting. Yes. Um, they can go that. fill out a form and it will... Um, they just sign up for whatever whatever they're interested in helping with. Yep. So on both the tree sale, plant sale, and annual meeting websites, and also on our volunteer page, and also on the front post page, there is a link to a single <laughs> volunteer form. So there's multiple places you can find it so people can sign up to volunteer for those three events. Mm -hmm. We've got a few volunteers already. Good. Okay. I know in the past, I've gotten in touch like with the tech center. Mm -hmm. Do you are you in contact with them? Do you want do you do we? I mean, we can wait till we get a little closer too, as far as yeah, we getting should getting bodies there for that. I mean, I know they always brought like a half a dozen. It'd be students. good, yeah, if you want to get in contact with them and see if they want to help out with uh um tree wrapping, um, sure. definitely, and we can give you the the link for them to go sign up with, or even just contact either maybe Natalie. Just yeah, to, you can contact me. Mm -hmm. Great. Morgan you, wanna, Morgan, you want to talk about plant sale? <laughs> um, I was just have to. No, just uh, we will not put her on the spot. We have um, garden kits and Here. no beach grass <laughs> bundles um, for pre-order up on our website. So please direct people there to order. Um, we'll also have a day of sale. I was doing numbers for 2023, and I think we sold like 1,300 plants last year. So um, we ordered a little bit more this year, I believe. Um, so please tell people about our day of sale. and Because mm -hmm. um, it's like Black Friday. It is, yeah. <laughs> the spring yeah. sale last year sold out in 30 minutes. So we ordered significantly yeah. more plants this year, even more than the, we had, what we had ordered for mm -hmm. fall. Um, and uh, yeah, that's really good. Like, and I only mentioned Morgan because she's been really fantastic and has basically taken over getting all the plant sale stuff done. So she's been super Thanks, helpful. Morgan. She was the one I was talking about when I said that. Mm -hmm. I had a, let's say, a professional landscaper asking me if you guys give discounts on your plants. We do discounts see. for nonprofits and schools, 15%. You're not. Not for for profit companies. Okay. Honestly, they would probably get a better deal just going straight to the. Yeah. Yeah, but why? Why do we want to sidetrack them? It's let's true. They them. want to support us. Then yeah. You know, if they spend, let's, I'm just going to pick a number. If they spend three thousand dollars, give them a ten percent discount. Mm -hmm. We have. I mean, I guess we've done some little stuff for like people to sponsor us. I don't know. Okay. Or if there was like some type of. Um, ahead of time coordination um we could help order I'll a big order contact one of you them. guys yeah. and you can tell them what you want okay i gave them the info on it mm -hmm. cool maybe we don't have to touch them can we just be the middleman order it, ship them to him collect the money yeah but they give a presentation there and stuff like that to plant sale right still do that some years we have done that yeah we've done like workshops um mm -hmm. I don't know if we're going to do that this year. This year, the goal is to hopefully have a rain barrel workshop. Um, okay. We're hoping we're partnering with Boar's Head to get rain barrels, more rain barrels than normal to sell for both our tree and plant sales. And then we're hoping to host a rain barrel workshop in May that will kind of be sort of like a workshop related to the native plant sale as well. Yes, I got suckered into picking them up one time. <laughs> well, we're going to be getting a lot back, more in the next back. few months, so... The, and, and, um, and just an idea for future for rain barrel workshops i know there was i forget who even did it somebody did a rain barrel thing last year and they partnered with culture works to like also have people like decorate their rain barrels they have mm -hmm. like an artist come in and like, we could still do that because we haven't officially like made 100 percent plans we're just like this is so what we want to do. Just an idea if that sounds like we a mean, fun addition. That in their rainbow yeah. workshops. Mm -hmm. If that sounds like a fun addition, I think. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. Take yeah. it or leave it. Yeah. No, that's definitely been something that we thought about, I think. Is that all the events? 
<laughs> well, <laughs> well, and then you'll, I'll just make a quick note. Like uh, you'll also see there's a save the date for a um, farm emergency planning workshop back there as well. That's not on here. That's a new one. That is a, that's a MEEP workshop that Karen's putting together. So it's a MEEP phase one as well as a farming forward one. So that is a brand new one that uh, just popped up. So spread the word, doing lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. We need Director Boring to come to one of our meetings. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, you want outcomes? We've got outcomes. Well, let's get into grants then. <laughs> All right. We have one that we're preparing. Um, well, we have a couple, but you'll see the other ones on the next board. Yeah, so um, I guess not technically a grant, but kind of a pseudo grant. Uh, anyways, we've talked a few times in the past about the water quality monitoring funding proposal that we've kind of put up to the county. Uh, they have a pot of money from a lawsuit. Uh, it's sitting in a county account. And, you know, essentially about a year and a half ago, Joe Bush came to us with the idea of partnering. Uh, also went to Outdoor Discovery Center. Uh, the goal being, let's put together a proposal to use some of this lawsuit money for the, the purpose that it's supposed to be for, which is monitoring and addressing non-point source pollution. So uh, we've been working for over a year on putting together this proposal and then officially getting on an agenda for the finance committee for Ottawa County to actually put this proposal in front of them and say, hey, uh, here's the project we have for you. We'd like some of this funding to do all this good monitoring work. Uh, and we are finally getting closer to the uh, the finish line here. So we have been working really close with Joe's office. Uh, Megan, obviously our former executive director works there too. And Joe's kind of put her at the tip of the spear in terms of getting us on the uh, finance committee agenda. Uh, and it looks like we're going to be there for the uh, the March meeting, which, do you remember what date that was? It was like March 6th? I think it was March 6th. Yeah. Um, so the the budget itself, it's, it's going to be a five-year proposal uh, that'll run from this year to, uh, let's see, 2029. Um, and it's about a million dollars. So that's going to cover us it's going to cover our partnership with odc it's going to have a sub award in there for you know a couple of universities for the actual lab analysis obviously a decent amount of equipment including a water quality monitor and buoy that's going to go into lake mac uh, and some other types of equipment but uh you know basically we're we're talking about doing something that has not been done in ottawa county and really hasn't been done in to my knowledge at least any county in the state we're looking at every single watershed countywide and, and basically monitoring for every single metric that we can think of. I mean, we're talking E. coli, we're talking nutrients, we're talking temp, DO, doing macro and vertebrate sampling, fish sampling. Um, the One of the things that, just to be selfish a little bit, one of the things that we wrote in here is a couple of backpack shocking units. So we're going to be doing our own P51 biological survey. So actually doing fish shocking in some of these watersheds. Um, just kind of building that inventory of what's there in terms of habitat quality and, and quantity. And uh, and then, you know, obviously this, if they say yes to this, um, we're looking at a startup, the, the very first quarter, the startup, this would be about $240,000. So that would cover the first quarter. Uh, it would advance the first quarter of this project and then all of our equipment budget. So we'd be able to buy all the equipment we need for that five years. Uh, and then after that, it would be quarterly payments of around $40,000 to, again, cover wages for Sarah and I mostly, a little bit for Natalie for admin, uh, and then any of our sub-awards to partners as well, paying for lab work, uh, paying for wages through OEC network, so on and so forth. So nice. we're getting close. We're almost there. Um, I'm pretty excited about it, personally. Super exciting. And we thought this was going to be tabled. For a while, obviously, there's there's, you know, Ottawa County went through, you know, a few kind of dramatic things recently with the lawsuit that they had and with some of the budget stuff that took a while to get through. And so this was all kind of shelved uh, for, I mean, the better part of a year. And then all of a sudden, you know, a few weeks ago, Joe Bush calls us up and uh, I think I, I think it was like 5 p.m. I was driving home and he's like, hey, we got a green light. Let's let's go. Let's do this. So we had to within just the last few weeks kind of prepare a final budget, prepare all this kind of stuff and get ready to go on this agenda. So 
How does this work, Jack, with more than two board members maybe going to the said meeting? That would not be a violation of the Open Meetings Act. That would not. Okay. Is that because it's not our own meeting? That's because you're not there to deliberate board business. You're there to inform the uh, represent the, the board and inform mm -hmm. uh, the finance committee if they have any questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I got a question. Um, is this considered growth? Who's going to do this work? Yeah, uh, good question. So this, um, so again, we do have our partners. So some of this will, work will be done through ODC yeah. Network. Mm -hmm. All the lab analysis will be done through our normal avenues, which is, you know, GBSU, Hope College. The actual sampling, we did write a considerable budget in there. Uh, it's it's about 200000 for mostly Sarah and I, some admin time for uh, uh, Natalie as well. Uh, that includes some indirects for the district, and that includes fringe and everything too. Um, the, the easiest way I can describe it is in, in a lot of our 319 projects in the past, we've done monitoring. Uh, we've had grants for uh, culvert inventories as well. And so a lot of this work that we're proposing over the next five years, we've kind of piecemeal done that over the last few years anyways. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, if we get this moving forward and we have this funding for the next five years, we no longer have to write monitoring into all these grants. So dedicated funding stream. Uh, yep, dedicated funding stream. Uh, it, it's really it's only going to be about on average like five six hours per week um, over the next five years. Uh, obviously, it's monitoring, so it's going to kind of ebb and flow, right? There's going to be quarters where it's heavy, where we go out once or twice a week. There's going to be quarters where we hardly do anything with this project. So, and it's going to coincide with a lot of our existing projects too. So we're not going to hire staff, and no, nope, at this no. point, it it should be all in house. This that I put together, this is just showing um, kind of like Ben and I's um, grants and like times being covered over the basically the next ten years. So, the gray blocks are grants that we currently have, and so that's for how long they're lasting. The yellow are for all the grants and funding sources that we have applied for that are not currently official. So the very bottom one on both of ours, the one that says monitoring, you can see this is lasting for a very long time. So like this is even lasting for areas where we don't yet have funding. And so basically it's being spread out over a long amount of time. So it kind of helps us, you know, we have to sort of fill in where our funding is coming from for our jobs right now. So that's, um, takes a little bit of the load off a little bit um long term so Job security there. a little bit there yeah. yeah and then we can you know for 319 grants in the future we can apply for more bmp money versus having to have monitoring in there so that's nice it's a nice match one of the yeah that's what i was going to say one of the really great things here is every grant we apply for like like the 319 grants they require 25 percent match we're automatically going to have that i mean any grant we could possibly apply for in the next five years if we get this money, we've already met the match. Without, and like and that's yeah. such a big deal, yeah. and it has to be non-federal funds. Yeah. So that will open the door for other and other grants for other employees and other projects over time too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Not meaning new employees to be clear to, to continue to fund the employees we have. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because we have to <laughs> always for money to keep the drafts going and keep the resources going. Yep, good job. Sisma. Yeah, so we have some, they're the same pending grants that we had last month. Um, we're still waiting to hear back on a federal funding stream to continue our treatments for hemlock woolly adulthood on the northern front. Um, we also are still waiting to hear back on another federal funding stream, it's similar to GLRI, but it's a landscape rest, uh, scale restoration grant. And that includes, um, concert, it's got eight conservation district partners, four FAP foresters and three SISMAs. So that's a huge collaborative project um, that we're still waiting to hear on. Um, and then we have uh, our state grant that we submit every year is still pending as well. Um, at least the federal ones, I'm hoping to hear back within the next month. Um, the state grants probably in March. We usually execute them in April. Any questions? Watershed program funding. 
the first one listed is the Watershed Council grant. So again, these are ones that have already been applied for. Um, we should hear back about the Watershed Council grants um, this spring. And that's just a short one year grant focused on Little Black Lake watershed, um, like a lake watershed management plan. And then the other one is the Glacial Lakes grant that we applied for. So. Yeah, which I think we talked about last month, which would just cover uh, planning and implementation of natural shoreline design on mostly Spring Lake and Property Lake. NACD. We received this grant um, and signed the paperwork. So that one uh, next month won't be on here anymore because it will be implemented. Perfect. That brings us to board updates. Two minutes of fame. Rivka, fire away. Or did you already? I already pretty much said all the major huh? things going yeah. on on my end. Uh, question first. <clears throat> I brought up last time about that cover crop thing. How do we do that? Do I have to talk to you about that? Or do we bring that to a board, to an agenda? Or cover or crop. The, the tier thing with the different types of funding oh yeah no that's something that i would have to work into probably my next proposal to to are, are you willing to do that or do we need to talk about that i think um it, i think that's i don't think that would have to be like a board decision but i would have to write that into my next 319 grant proposal which would be like this coming fall okay. um because that's you know typically how we do it is when we write into the budget for that grant and then it gets written into the, like the work agreement and the work plan and everything and like right now the way it's written is a flat 35 bucks an acre so okay. to to kind of change up how we pay farmers it would have to be kind of written into that so great okay. and but then, i like the idea i i honestly i thought it was okay. so, yeah. so how will i know i i want to put it out of my mind how will i know that's going to be talked about or happen or I just drop it from here. How, how do I do that? Um, no, I think uh, I think if you if you're really interested in seeing us make that a thing, like change the way we pay people going forward, um, let's have a conversation again, like in the summer, as we're kind of gearing up to write that next grant. So what? So when do I need to rattle your chain? August. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say August. Yeah. yeah. Um, second question or comment. Um, I see some work being done already in our cultivating resilience. Is that a planning all done? The planning is not done. No. Uh, so we are in the very beginning stages of planning for that. Um, so things are going to be a little different uh, for this year. So we are moving from a, a summer field day to a winter conference with follow-up small field days in the summer to kind of focus on topics. Um, so currently the plan is that in 2024, we are not planning to have a large major culturing resilience event. We're gonna have some smaller workshops this year, but we are planning for a, I think probably March, early March uh, winter workshop or winter conference and to get some bigger speakers. So we've started reaching out our first um, culturing resilience uh, planning meeting with all the partners uh, we had recently. And we kind of talked about three different um, potential speakers. Uh, I think the one we we're reaching out to initially is, I think his name is Jeff Andreessen. And he talks about, um, it's a kind of a little bit of a focus on climate change with talking about current, what, what we're seeing currently changes in the current climate and how it's affecting farmers and what we could be seeing in the next few years with like changes in, you know, when it's wet, when snow is coming, the changing of growing seasons, things like that. And then we want to focus our breakout sessions kind of to have that theme, but then maybe focus it on different commodities. Um, so we're kind of focusing on getting our main keynote speaker first, and then we'll kind of get those commodities and those breakout sessions after. We also tossed around the idea of talking, um, gosh, what are, what are the names of the other two? They're kind of bigger guys. Do you guys remember the names of them? I don't remember their name. Oh, but there's some bigger ones, and I'm just mm. spacing on the name right now. I don't have my computer in front of me, but there were some. We were trying to see if we can get some bigger, bigger speakers. Is ideally for that because we won't have to spend money on rental equipment and stuff like that, like a big tents and field, because the places we're looking at would be indoors, so we'd be able to save that. And then with the follow up workshops in the summer. So the idea is we have our winter conference in the winter. Oh, or in, 
25. Yeah. Hmm? Of March 25. Yeah. Yep. And then in the summer, um, we'll have like two to three follow-up field workshops that focus on specific topics that were talked about <laughs> at that workshop. And then that way, people who are interested in learning more about that specific topic can come and actually see something happening in person or see some equipment or things like that. So it's kind of like a main event with some follow-up series. Who, who are you trying to get to come to these meetings? So these are farmers, ideally, of all sorts. Um, that's kind of something we have talked about because in the last few years, it's been about half and half farmers versus um, the farmer industry folks, folks who work for farmers. And so that was something with our uh, commodity idea is that with our breakout sessions, we want to try to, we're kind of following along with the Van Buren Farming Forward, or not Farming Forward, Farming for the Future, I think is what they call their event. So what they do is they have like three breakout sessions and um, each one's kind of like a different, I think it was a commodity, but where our idea would be like, one would be um, traditional row crops, one could be for more focused livestock, one could be more for more focused on fruit. And then we would have similar topics, but it'd be focused on those commodities so that people can come away with information that is more related to them. And then we, if we have those breakup commodities, then we can get more people interested from all the spans of farming. So trying to figure out ways to grow it and make it useful to everyone and not just have like, oh, well, we have a topic on livestock things where not everyone's going to be interested in that. And so, yeah. yeah. So it's still in the works a little bit, kind of um, based off of final details of like the agenda and all that stuff will be figured out once we have our initial keynote speaker um, yeah. figured out. Um, farmers don't want to go to 16 meetings. For sure. It's hard enough to get them to one. Right. That's why with those little follow-up, um, so the big one is going to be kind of like the big main informational one. So that's the one we would encourage everyone to go for. The follow-up field days will be something that you don't have to go to all of them. You don't have to go to any of them if you don't want to. And it's going to be more of like, if you want to actually see something on the ground, you can come, um, but you don't necessarily have to. So, so it's how, kind of- How many people came for your second- um, one last year with the helicopter, with the helicopter we had a good solid like i don't know like 30 to 40 people show up for that it was a solid group of people who wanted to actually come and see farmers uh i don't know that i took an exact list of how many were farmers but it was a i recall a bunch of them were local farmers it would probably say at, at least half well and i would say one of the challenges that too was the fact that it was scheduled last night. It wasn't planned ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So probably with promotion ahead of time. Mm -hmm. The goal is that we would have those follow-up workshops scheduled mm -hmm. ahead of time so people can right. put them on their calendars. So they're, you know, say the idea is like if we have a breakout session that's focused on irrigation improvements, for example, and we're going to have a follow-up workshop um, in someone's field looking at a... Um, I'm spacing on words today. What's Summer, the, pivot. Summer center pivot. There we go. Uh, we'll have someone, We maybe we're having a workshop where people are going to come out into a field, look at a center pivot, and then we teach them how to do, like, say, irrigation uniformity, just an example. So that would be, a, you'd come see that test happening. You'd learn more about it. You get to see someone's center pivot that maybe has some updated um, uh, equipment and things in there. And then that could be something they'd go to, and maybe they wouldn't want to go to the other in-person sessions. But it'd be an opportunity to have some more targeted um, things like that, you know, maybe another one could be like a, a grazing walk, you know, maybe something that's more focused on like a prescribed, uh, grazing type idea, if that is a session that was talked about. So trying to kind of connect it with a field portion if people are interested. Have you, have you ever thought about partnering with, um, I'm going to use an example, like a, like a seed corn company or something. They get farmers to come. Mm -hmm. We and, do. And yeah. tag along with that. Yeah. We've had a couple. So like Byron Seeds always um, sponsors and tries breakfast to Breakfast on the farm. Mm -hmm. Them kind of events. Yes. So breakfast on the farm, I know. So that's an MSU event that they host. Yeah. And um, we have been in talks with them to, you know, I, I remember Charles always talks to us about like, we, he definitely wants us to be on the planning committee for that. If it happens, I do know for this year, I guess I'm not really sure exactly how it works, but I guess MSU has to like apply to have uh, breakfast on the farm in certain you regions. You have to apply to MSU as an extension. Okay. Through extension. Gotcha. It ain't just your local extension. You you know the local extension guys are kind of like your representatives. They promote it right to the you, board. Or you promote it to the board, but the, there's an overall board of extension, you know, at the college mm -hmm. that say yay or nay to. And this year they said nay to anything in Ottawa County. Yeah, because yeah. they had. How do we change that? Um, that's more of a concert. That's more of a um extension. 
<laughs> you know, um, cooperative extension says yay or nay to that, you know, and that's, it's always been that way. It's been kind of a political thing. They can only do, and I get it, you know, they can only do two or three really good ones a year. And they've chosen somewhere else in Michigan to do them this year. Mm -hmm. um, that's what, um, last week at the Farm Bureau meeting, they they had said that, you know, they, they Ottawa County had put in or, you know, submitted their application, but it was, it was passed over by the, and you can't, several years ago, we were going to do it, Farm Bureau was going to do it, you know, without them. And it was kind of a, you know. Stay out of our territory. Well, it was, you know, we couldn't use breakfast on the farm. We couldn't use the name. We couldn't, you know, there was a lot of no, no things that, mm -hmm. you know, that we end up, we had to hold up a year and do it, you know, do it the next year, you know, with them instead of trying to fight them, so mm -hmm. to speak. So it is a, yes, how do we get them? It's, it's, it's higher up, you know, than, than just the Ottawa mm -hmm. County mm -hmm. reps, you know, that are here. So. Mm -hmm. But um, to your point in getting those farmers to come to our event, you know, we do also partner with MSU and those folks um, help to promote our event as well to people who may potentially want to go to a breakfast on the farm, but then if we don't have one local, then well, there's I, our event. Do you have somebody you want to see? Or I'm just going to be blunt and honest yeah, with please. you. Um, I've been to a lot of your cultivating resent. There's nobody there I know. Yeah. So it tells me you're not reaching the crowd that I deal with. Mm -hmm. That's something that is honestly something that is on our radar. We've Should noticed. Them, Tim? They don't want to come. <laughs> well, that's the thing. And that's why. Uh, so be honest. Yeah, because we've been we, seeing a we lot also more. host them kind of in the southern part of the county, too. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a factor because we yes. do get quite a few like Allegan and southern Ottawa County farmers that, mm -hmm. that do go to that event. Mm -hmm. So can we change areas? So right now that event is a partnership with Allegan Conservation District and us. Um, so the idea has been that we keep it central to the two counties. However, we've been having some slight discussions in the last few months of maybe changing that up in the future. Um, currently, it's still a partnership with Allegan. Uh, so we're going to, um, okay. or the goal is to host it. We were thinking about hosting it, like our conference at the, maybe the Pinnacle Center in Hudsonville. Um, but uh Yes, yeah, so we definitely would just need to do some more promotion. And we have noticed that we get maybe a lot more smaller farmers per se in the last few years than we've had bigger. But that's why we're kind of hoping with this more targeted like commodity where we have some sections where, oh, maybe we can get some bigger folks from the row crops community or maybe some bigger folks from the nurseries or the blueberries if we have some more focused content for them versus just having some generic um, content okay. that fits everyone-ish. Matt, so. was this a question for you? Did you go to that seed plot that... Um... I think Wilbur Ellis put on by over Loach it said yes. some yeah you were there. Yes. Can't we tie in with something like that? We don't have to promote their seed, but no, but where the farmers are there, do that first, have yeah. their little and I don't I guess yeah, that'd have to be a question. I, I can't believe there would be a big conflict of interest. We're both trying to teach them something. You know, have the crowd was there. Relative why did, why did they come there? The food was good. Food. They had good food. They got good budget for food. <laughs> it, it, the, the food was good. Everybody likes to see a good pot. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a it's a camaraderie thing with the neighbors. It it was very relative. And what do you mean by that? Hands on, you could use it. You could, you know, and so that brings them. We gotta we gotta you gotta be relevant. That brings brings them, and now we teach them. Yep. So how do we do that? That's getting harder and harder with the uh, with the specialization of what ag is doing. Yeah. So you it know, can be seen so, corn one year. Next year we got to go animal agriculture somehow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing. I mean, several fifteen and years, fifteen and twenty years ago, you know, I had a couple at my place, and we did them up at Bill Miller's, and you know, so I mean, we did the north end of the county for first. I'm going to say several years, but. You know, I get it. We're trying to partner with with another county to try to, you know, again, there's there's trying to make it relative to get more people to come to it. I think I like your idea of trying to get a bigger name speaker in mm -hmm. who's maybe a a Ken Ferry or a, or a, or some big guru in there's like a name grass farming and. Um... You know the 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 Gabe Browns. That was world. that's one of the names that was on our list of trying to see. So if I mean, he's champion. but he's expensive. I mean, he's yeah. he's yeah. the Super Bowl champion of mm -hmm. you know of that end of agriculture. But again, oh, Gabe either. Brown ain't going to relate to big row crop guys because mm -hmm. they can't 
Yeah. Fathom what he's doing. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Well, so two different true. wavelengths. He's two different. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but so some other speakers that we had in our list for potential bigger like keynote was Mark Shepard or Rick Clark as well. And I think they have more of like a regenerative egg focus, but then that's one something where we could have this like main topic and then have those have it have those different breakouts for different commodities to say, okay, how do you relate this to your commodity now? Yes. I got a question. Yes. I'll, I'll be a dink. No. We're we're promoting we're promoting the five acre guy, but the five thousand acre guy is the guy we need to teach. Mm -hmm. So we're missing the point. Is this maybe something we should have a bigger conversation about at a future? That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, think we, we need want... to keep talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know how how we're. I I here's how I see it, and I'll take I'll take my two minutes to talk about. Here's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Big farming, big egg, big grow crop, big cattle, big, big livestock. You know, don't want to listen to to uh you know a grazer or a uh open range, you know, a free range type of guy. I think we almost need to do two different, you know. Actually, one, we will teach more people and we will be more conservation minded going after the 20 acre guy. Mm -hmm. There's more of them. There's there's more acres tied up in 20 acre farms than there is in big egg. I disagree with that. But go ahead. And they're they're willing to come to a meeting. They're they're teachable. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's been several years that I've seen this this statistic. this statistic of they're polluting more streams than the big guys are. That that little the guy with two horses and the guy with you know half a dozen goats and you know he's pitching his. I mean. Years ago, I mean, they showed us pictures, you know, the guy's pitching his horse stall out into the stream, you know, behind his house. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he's polluting more acres and, and miles of stream than than the big guy, mm -hmm. you know, who's spread manure responsibly. I mean, if you think about it, too, yeah, those bigger, the really big farms that have, like, like maybe their CAFOs or really lots, lots of acres, I mean, a lot of times... Um, they're going to have a more regulatory action happening towards them anyways, because they've got more eyes on them. And so a lot of times it is the smaller farmers that kind of have more issues because no one's really looking at them. And also they're maybe kind of flying under the radar of regulations. So we, you know, go in and help teach them. So you won't get a 2000 cow dairy to come, right? You won't get a hog unit to come. They got people, mm -hmm. they got, they got people, I'm sorry, smarter than you mm -hmm. and, and more money. Yeah. Then you Sometimes they, they go seek out that that knowledge and that wisdom and, and can pay their own way. Okay, you know, they will go I see. We've seen we get representatives from some of those people. It may not be the actual main farmers themselves, but I think in some past we've had some like representatives from certain farmers come. So um, but yeah, that's kind of why also the health of resilience, we with the smaller breakout sessions, we were trying to find ways to get to more of those bigger farmers with those kind of specific yeah. commodity things. So we're we're figuring out ways to kind of make this a bigger and more capable and to get more people coming in and interested. So but all good thoughts, Tim. Definitely things we're thinking about. This is something there's a food plot seminar coming up in February, um, put on by the Coopersville Hardware. Um, Tracy just shared with me, and we've got a couple of people going to this. So there's like events like this that in the future, if this is in February and our conference is in March in the future, you know, we'll, we could go to these things and then um, promote our event, maybe say, hey, if you're interested in learning some more things about stuff like this, maybe come to our event in a couple of weeks. I so, think also. That's good one. If son in law, Tim, if you have topics in mind that you think would draw people like that, let that's us let yeah. us know. We, yeah, definitely. They, yeah, well, look at all the events they're they're doing. Like, doesn't mean just because it's not this event doesn't mean it can't be an event. I don't want to say no names in public, but I know there's a check in this pile right now. Mm -hmm. I'm a large, large farm. He's doing the cover crop thing mm -hmm. strictly for the money. Mm -hmm. He doesn't believe in it. He <laughs> doesn't practice it. He doesn't get it, and he doesn't want to learn. But I know I can get that gentleman to a seed corn plot because he goes to him. Mm -hmm. But maybe while he's there, he can see something, learn something, listen, and maybe try something. That's my that's my. That's point. the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can help help uh, help us get him there, we'll plan an event for you. Have you that gotta, conversation. You gotta help us get him there, Doug. You got that's the problem. You got your time almost sucked out. Yeah, no minutes. time for you, Doug. That's what do you sorry. got? I did go to a conservation on tab, which was a nice thing. Um, I did a SISMA interview 
for Red Cup. That was two hours. Thank <laughs> Did you find it? And <laughs> did a few bookkeeper <laughs> things, and we did hire a bookkeeper. Yeah. And That's been a feat itself. That's that bookkeeper it. has, yeah, has been the good. elusive but we person to find. So yeah. congratulations to all who had, had in on that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you all for your help and work this past month. Um, yeah, that brings us to the end, I believe. No correspondence, no PA 116. So if there's somebody so in turn to entertain a motion to adjourn, I adjourn. <laughs> Board members, stay here. She's got two checks for you. Woohoo! Oh, we're adjourned. All right, awesome. Thank you, everybody. What do you mean? Is that all? It is. You have one check. Oh,